hi, my name is Queen Margana and welcome back to the Sims 4 Ultimate Decades Challenge. This is year 1383 and we're still kind of reeling from Mary's death from the previous episode, which uh, Denise, you know, she she felt a little bit bad about it. You know, she hasn't seen her mother in years at this point and, you know, she just received the letter a while back that oh, a few a few months ago at this point that pretty much told her from Annabelle and another one from her sister that their mother had passed away of old age and you know she received the money from her family's household funds that she didn't necessarily need but she received it anyways it wasn't much so I still don't know where that 46 something that 60 something thousand went or the 40 something thousand went but that like 5k that was split between Denise and Amise and went to them I checked so no clue what happened to that other 40k but I put it back anyways because that was silly and stupid okay her daughter's glitching out please stop thank you <laughs> but we're not here for that one we're here for this one so it's actually little Madison's birthday and I'm really excited this is Denise's last well, youngest child is also her last pregnancy, so she only has three kids, and I'm really rooting for all three of them. That being said, let's just go ahead and survive. I can't remember what she was. She was an alien. I don't think she got any mat. Wait, Denise doesn't have magic either. No, no, no. Okay, none of them are hybrids. So their cousins all became like hybrids. Catherine, if I recall, yeah, she's not an alien at all. She just uh has weird eyes, and she's purely a spellcaster. Wait, I just realized she has a glimmer stone, but her, uh, she doesn't have this thing at the top of her plumb bob that says she's a spellcaster, but she's also not an alien. Gonna ignore that for now. Um, and her brother, da David, he is fully an alien and he does not have any magical abilities whatsoever. And their sister, Madison, same thing. So she, Catherine's the only one who got the magic, but... Let's just roll for Madison. She's ro she's aging up into a child, so we need to get a d20 out. And we want to avoid numbers 9 and 19. So Madison got a 14. Okay, nice. So Madison survives. Let me see. Madison Canfield. I need to change her last name because uh, it says Smith. She's not a Smith. She's a Canfield. So let's just age her up and get to know her a little bit more. We're so close to ending off this household when she, when she is a teenager and she has her teenage role, I should say. Then this household will become an NPC household and I'll put Denise and her children, maybe Parker. Well, Parker's not my sim, but I'll put Denise and her children on the gallery. Let's see, she was a language savant and now she's generous and delightful. Oh, okay, she, she, she's such a sweet sim, okay. Um, let's give her social butterfly. She's a sweetie pie. I'm gonna give her a quick little makeover and I'll be right back. All right, here we go. A super, super quick makeover, but this is her. Honestly, all three of their surviving children are super cute and super good looking. And I'm honestly excited to see them all grow up. I don't know who she takes after more. I see a bit of Parker and I also see a, quite a bit of Denise in her, but this is madison and just like her siblings i'm excited to see her grow up but let's head back to our main household so back to our main household uh-oh we're late on our taxes Jeez, i didn't even get to do a regular intro but while we compare taxes lucia has just entered her third trimester so she'll be giving birth at any moment most likely sometime around wednesday morning around this time if i know how the game works which sometimes i apparently don't but i'm having stephen take care of his daughter for a bit okay stop stop reading to her that's really cute and really good for her learning abilities but i need you to to let her potty and and give her give her a bath <laughs> now i you're not you're not strict stop it now i do want to go out and explore a little bit with uh you know with albretta and her recent fling i think that'd be kind of cute but let me get everyone situated real quick and let annabelle come back from hunting just the basic everyday things we normally do stephen if you're gonna start if you're gonna start doing things right finish it oh my god literally just just give her a bath. Why are you trying to go play out in the pond?
The absolute worst. Actually the worst. You know what? I actually completely forgot about this uh, because it's really weird and gross and I don't want to think about it. But technically, Lucia did roll the want to flirt with Annabelle. I don't condone this in real life or modern day. But this is a challenge about the 1300s and I'm feeling rather chaotic. So I don't know. Just go and her appearance. Start off. Um, sure. Harfin. Uh, of course she's not gonna accept it. You're her son's. What? What? That's not what I meant by I'm feeling chaotic. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> It's worse than I thought. I thought it was going to be really awkward. And she's going to be like, girl, what are you doing? And then they, they was just going to leave it there. Okay. So, Lucia, you're lying to yourself. Anna, so, Annabelle says she's not interested in romance with Lucia due to non-compatible romantic orientation. So, Lucia thinks she's straight. Um, but also is very much aware that this is her daughter-in-law, who is the mother of her grandchild. And about to be mother of her second grandchild. Oh, like, I actually don't even know how to like explain my thoughts. My my brain just completely halted processing abilities. So Lucia says, love in unexpected places. Lucia has known known Annabelle for a while now, but somehow things are different now. Lucia has always thought that she would recognize her soulmate from the moment she met her, but it turns out that love was right under Lucia's nose all along. Clearly, so she has the hots for Grimm, but her soulmate, that's the name we wanted to click on, they're, they're soulmates. Okay. I actually don't even know what to do with this information. Actually, yeah, I actually don't know what to do with this information. Um, boy, oh boy. Um, so what I'm going to do for now is... Nothing, actually. I'm going to completely ignore that that happened for now and focus on Albretta. Um, no. <laughs> this is about Albretta now. I'm going to completely ignore the fact that... Oh. <laughs> okay, guys, I, let's talk about... Let's talk about how crazy that scenario is. We are very worried that Stephen is going to end up being hurt or killed by Lucia if... He pursues a gay relationship, like, outside of their marriage, uh, like, like behind her back. She's doing the same thing that we're scared about her potentially killing him about, or not killing him, but, like, exposing him to the villagers who would then kill him about, right? So, so, so what are we doing? So anyways, she wants to go visit Harold. Yeah, so here's the thing. Harold got married, like, sometime within last last week's episode. Gosh, when did, she, when did he get married? I, I think right after the episode ended or, like, the final day of that episode. But, like, after we met him. So he actually went off and ran off and got married to Susanna. And if that name doesn't sound familiar, because there's a ton of Susannas in the family tree, if you're keeping up with the side household updates, this is the same Susanna who had um, Avery's baby, but then married Stephen, older Stephen, who's now dead. And they had, I think she had one kid with older Stephen. And of course she has Avery's baby. And now she went off and married Harold. And Harold, it technically says that they're soulmates, but Harold is also pretty attracted to Albretta, I'm not sure if Alberta knows about this marriage or not. Well, clearly she's popping up. She knows now. But when they first met and start, first started flirting and everything, Harold was not married. So I don't think Alberta cares enough to stop to like do anything about this. Yes, they're soulmates. But based on the soulmate mod, because I have so many soulmates who don't even really like each other or they're not even attracted to each other, I'm going to say that soulmates aren't always in love. 
right? There's some other reason that makes them soulmates. But in this specific case, I'm going to say that Harold's family pushed him to marry Susanna because she was a single lady in the village. She came from a respectable family, brought along some of Stephen's money with them and their peasant family. So they needed it. And they were just like, suck it up, boy. We need the money. And so he did. But I think he might have a little bit of a flirtatious affair with Alberta, which you know, would not be good for her reputation if this gets out. Susanna's human, so she can't really do nothing. So is Harold. Um, Alberta's not. Alberta is a hybrid. Not that I think she would do anything, but if we're going to go that route, let's just go visit Harold and see how things go. I'm going to leave Lucy. I'm scared to leave Lucia and Annabelle here because Annabelle's not going to move out anytime soon. She's, she's not leaving until she dies unless something crazy happens, but... Like, I'm still processing it. <laughs> I'm still processing the fact that Stephen's mother and his wife slash mother of his children are actually soulmates. That's also quite a bit of a gap. It's, it's a it's tiny bit of an age gap. Okay, so here's Susana. You see, like, this is Mahe's son. I'm not sure if I saw, showed him in the update, but just in case y'all don't see it, this is Mahe's son. Um, no, it is not. It's not Mahe's son. It's Avery's son. So Mahe's grandson. This is the baby mother in question, Susana. And then this is Stephen's daughter who he had with Susana. I think her name is Sarai. Yeah. So they're all here, but we're not here for any of them. We're actually here for Harold. So let's go knock on the door. Where's the door? The door was in a weird spot last time. It was back here. Let's come on. Oh, there goes Grim. Hey, Grim. Go knock on the door. See if we can find Harold. We might have to get him out of here because his wife is right there. I, I saw him. I was there. Thank you. Grim truly... Wait, wait, wait. Harold. We saw you. Where'd you go? Did he literally just up and leave? Did he go to, like, work or something? No, no, no. He came out here to talk to his wife. Hey, I know you're married. See, it doesn't sound like you're too happy with her. It doesn't sound like you're having a good time with her, Harold. Let me... Can I add to group? I have so many mods. I know how to... Okay, there we go. Let me see if I can... If we can go somewhere private. I know it's raining. Maybe let's go inside the house somewhere private. It's a nice-sized house, to be fair. Maybe upstairs? Let's let's come upstairs and just have a conversation in private. Oh, someone died. Who's who's urn is this? Christian Shearer. Oh, she been dead. Christian's been been gone. Okay. Hey Harold. How's it going? We missed you. Let's um let's discuss stressed moo. What's what's going on? Tell us about I think his wife is stressing him out. I don't think he and Susanna really he he does really like having these conversations. He's not put up by the fact that she's an alien. Also, I was trying to figure out how all these human sims were figuring out that my alien sims were aliens when they weren't in their alien form. Clearly, it's because they're literally glowing. <laughs> Terrible disguise mechanic. What the heck? So let's just let's be a little bit physical. I, I honestly think that Harold might leave his wife to run off with Alberta and they'll join the theater together. Right? Like, that's just kind of where I see this going. He's not liking his relationship with Susanna. As far as I'm aware, Susanna's not pregnant or anything like that. But, okay. I know according to the rules, you're not supposed to, like, kiss outside of marriage or anything like that or until they get married. But our brother's never getting married. And they're going to be doing far more than kissing, potentially. I never actually said if they would have children or not, but who, who's, who knows? I haven't decided yet. <laughs> okay, so these two, I wonder if... Oh, what was that? <laughs> he seems to be enjoying it. And so, it doesn't say that they're soulmates or anything quite yet, but... You know, this is her first crush, her first love, something she never thought she would experience or wanted to experience. So I wonder if... Hmm. 
oh, our, our romance isn't high enough to like increase that. I wonder if like we continue to increase our romance. I'm just trying to make sure his wife isn't like at the stairs. <laughs> but I wonder if we can become like partners in secret. Not that I condone this type of stuff, but I think that this might be kind of best for Albretta and him. That squeal she let out was really cute. Oh, that was adorable. Okay, so now they are secret partners. His wife doesn't know, nor do I think she cares. You know, she, I, I don't know what Susanna's goal was, but she was clearly just trying to uh, secure some type of marriage after Stephen died because she really didn't even waste any time, really at all. So I don't think she necessarily loves this guy, right? And he clearly doesn't really love her. But I think, I think that Harold and, and, and uh, Chosen One, the final choice, Alberta feels elated and reassured by her partner's decision to choose her over the other. It's a validation of her feelings and a commitment to the relationship. Oh, okay. He must have did that on his own. I have the um, Love Triangle mod in as well, because I have all the mods. <laughs> but the Love Triangle mod, um, NPC Sims as well as Played Sims can choose, like say to whichever person they, they're choosing that, I'm choosing you over everybody else if if they have like romantic bar with everybody else. And so to get like give them like a mood lit that says that they've been chosen. They've been picked. I wonder if very attractive partners, lovers, first kiss, crush. Yeah, it doesn't say soulmate though. It could come around later, but it could also never show up, right? Because it took a while for um Aline. Nope, her name is not Alina. Amesis soulmate thing to show up and then as we can see Albretta not Albretta Annabelle and um Lucia have been living together for a few years now and they just realized that they're soulmates so <laughs> that's tricky what a tricky situation I think I'm gonna stop there while we're ahead we've already yes, we've already yes, like soon, kissed we're more. not supposed to be kissing and being that oh. physical with a man who's not our husband oh. Yeah, I think that these two are definitely going to plan to run off together, but they just not sure where quite yet. So we might spend another year or two of them just kind of sneaking around. What does she age up? This is okay. She has quite a while. Yeah, we're most likely going to be spending another year or two or like another year because I think she'll be 16 or 17 soon. Another year or so just getting their relationship up and having them have the final conversation and make the final decisions on where they need to run off to. Cause they need to get far away enough away from any influence that his family or Susanna might have. And considering this is a completely peasant situation, I don't think that they'll have much power to track them down or do anything crazy. So she's walking away anyways, not to be suspicious, doesn't want anyone to catch her. You know, in the sleeping quarters with a married man. Okay, they're just casually. That's that's not inconspicuous, guys. It's very conspicuous. All right. So no one's noticed. Everyone's doing their own thing. They just had a private conversation as friends. And everything's fine and nothing's weird at all. Fantastic. So I guess now we have no choice but to go back home and face the... The strangeness, go for a jog. Okay, you can do that when you get to the house. Chat with Arya and go for a jog. So I wanted her to stay within the village originally, but if she's going to be doing all this and getting with the man who's married and kind of ruining a family, actually, I don't think it's within her best interest or his best interest to stay in the village, to be honest. So they have a lot to think about. They have a lot to plan. They're in love. They want to stay together and... They really need to think these things through. All right, so we're back at the household with the two people I've been trying to completely avoid for the past like 10 minutes. <laughs> and I cannot escape them. Um, is there any chores I can make them do to escape? Absolutely not. Well, I can't believe my non procrastination has let me here. Okay, actually, there are some chores. We need like a little snack. So Lucia, um, I think, Honestly, they don't feel as awkward about it as as I would 
I, I assume one would fail, but I'm not sure if that's a, a good thing or a bad thing. Right? Like, because it, it won't be obvious to anybody else who's watching. But at the same time, y'all are a bit too comfortable with the fact that y'all now have these feelings for each other. Um, so Lucia, oh, I know you're chatting with your daughter. That's cool and all. But I want to see if you will. You, you, do you want to ponder your orientation real quick? Do you want to think about that a little bit more deeply? Don't lie to yourself or to me. Okay, so she still thinks she's straight. Lucia, it's eggs, sister. E Lord. Two episodes in a row. We haven't had this many fires in a while. Oh, she has a fire fear. She has a fear of fire because of uh, uh, Mary. My brain stopped functioning as soon as they found out they were soulmates, and I have not recovered. Okay. Um. Somebody, somebody come in here. Who's not scared of fire? Okay, this fire will go on for the rest of, like, eternity. All right, so she went outside. She, she asked for help. Lucia came to the rescue. Lucia. Okay, I thought she didn't finish the job. I was about to cuss her out. She got safe. She saved for now. Okay, well, um, maybe having her cook isn't the best option while she's this stressed, at least. Is there something we can make that does, can we have some spinach, make some flour salad. How about that? Let's make some flour salad. Doesn't require, doesn't require any of that. Oh my God, you are magical. Your eyes are changing colors. So what's the, what's the eye color today? Orange, beautiful. Um, I can tell that she's in such a good mood about finding her soulmate, even though she's lying to herself, because this is the first time in like years she actually has cordial and friendly conversations with Albretta without like getting mad at her or just walking away. She could not stand to be around Albretta for the longest time. For the longest time, like Albretta is down near an adult and you're just now like conversing with your daughter okay you know what stephen's kind of a piece of shit but we don't never talk about how much of a piece of shit annabelle is to be honest and it deserves to be acknowledged join cooking yeah i think she could use some... what did you just do okay i thought she i thought she erased her mom's memory i was about to say alberta that's insane that is the very thing that she's done before, though. But that would be insane. Okay, she didn't. She left her to go spend time with Lucia. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hmm. You know what? I also never had Lucia contemplate her gender identity or uh, who she liked. I, maybe I did? Oh no, wait, she has an unexpected crush. She's not gonna do it. Hmm. All right, so Lucia has realized that she is cis, but panromantic and asexual. Um, not surprised. So Annabelle's clearly lying to herself. Lucia's not, but... <laughs> um, Lucia, isn't she phobic as well? No. I thought she had the phobic. Oh, she is. Oh. 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 Okay, so let's break down this situation even further. Her husband is sleep none awares. We were all like, oh my gosh, Stephen's gonna cheat. We can't trust Stephen. Little do we know his wife's flirting with his mother. I actually don't make this up. I believe it or not, this is an unscripted series. The only thing that's scripted, quote unquote, is like <laughs> are like the events that are on a spreadsheet. That's the only thing. Uh, does someone have time to babysit you right now? Okay. Yeah, Annabelle's in such a good mood. She's having a good relationship with Alberta without, like, screaming at her. Who knew all it took was was to flirt with your daughter-in-law to get you to be nice to your actual daughter? Sometimes sacrifices are necessary. Is, is that a good sacrifice? Like, the sacrifice of morality? 
for a, a good relationship with your child? Oh, okay. And it, it was Annabelle. Okay, so Annabelle has realized that she's gender fluid, actually. Still apparently attracted to masculine sims. Which Lucia is not, nor does she identify as such. Okay, well, Annabelle, your gender fluidity means absolutely nothing, unfortunately, for you. However, I do respect it, and I respect your, um... I, I don't even know what to call this. Your connection, I'll say, with Lucia. They have a connection, for sure. And Lucia... This situation is so messed up because it's literally Lucia married Stephen, right? I'm sure they both are aware that this isn't the most loving of relationships. And, you know, it's not super uncommon during this time period. But Lucia married Stephen. Lucia is phobic, like very homophobic. And Stephen is, well, he thought he was gay, but apparently realized he was bisexual a little later on. But mostly linked likes to lean towards men for the most part. And then she got this random runt. Well, she already had an unexpected crush on a girl from the village she grew up in, but she suppressed it so much that she was, she, she, she absolutely suppressed it. The closet is made of glass and she put a poster over it to make it darker. And then she moved to the village with her husband, a couple kids in, well, I'm, I'm saying a couple, I'm assuming she's having one child. She could have twins, but a couple kids in, realizes a few years later that she also is soulmates with her husband's mom and apparently she's pan but the two people she's actually been super attracted to have been women we might need to change that to a big old lesbian flag oh brother where is this asexuality coming as a player lucia because i'm not seeing it all right annabelle hi I uh, get out of here. Is Lucia just gonna act like she's seen under that? She sure is. I think she gives birth in just a few oh, hours. Enough. Question mark. We have a few birthdays today, so I don't want to leave the household until she gives birth. But I also don't want to. If she gives birth later in the night, I don't want to just waste my time. Now what do you want to do? Try for another baby. Uh oh. I think she's trying to. Okay, phone. I think she's trying to cover up these feelings that she's been feeling with like a bunch of babies because children is kind of like proof of heterosexuality, question mark, quote unquote. Like no one can claim and she can kind of trick her own mind and be like, okay, I'm not feeling these feelings. Look, I have children with my husband. You know what I mean? I I'm explaining that really wrong. That's something people do even in modern times. Men and women, like they'll, they'll, like completely push down those feelings and completely just trick themselves into trying to be quote unquote normal, that they'll lead whole lives, like get married, say that they love someone, have children. And, and it's all, I don't know, for a show or either for show for others or a show for themselves. So sometimes you'll see like, uh, 50 year olds, 70 year olds, like people way older in life and they're just looking back and they're like, I don't like my family because they never even wanted to have their family because they're not attracted to women and then proceeded to have children. Well, they might like their kids, but you know, I don't do this in real life, guys. <laughs> Accept yourself and if you feel like you're in a position where you can't, don't start a relationship and hurt someone else's feelings. This is not that type of situation. Neither one of them really like each other. They're not each other's types, to be honest. <laughs> it, they can say pan and bi all they want they definitely lean towards the same gender like he's bi definitely gay leaning he to the point he thought he was gay too i'm not sure where this bi came in from but he's bi definitely lean towards men she's pan which she just realized which, which isn't really a word during this time period but she's she's pan technically definitely women leading but she's so phobic that she's like I don't know. She built her own closet. <laughs> if she was honest with herself and Stephen was honest with her, they can honestly use this marriage as a front, have some kids, and then pursue their own outside relationships carefully. But no, everybody's got to be secretive and ruin relationships and make things awkward. 
Annabelle has this moodlet that says near the one I love from just being near soulmate. Girl, your soulmate is up here. You're all the way over here. You're you're that in love. Just being on the same lot is filling with such joy and energy. I mean, that's a true type of love. I want to be loved like that one day. Not under these specific circumstances, but if you're feeling joy just by the mere knowledge that I'm like 50 feet away, I'll take it. Okay, so Lucia is actually in labor right now. So I did get the time right, which makes me really happy because I thought I was wrong. So I actually need to buy a crib. All right, Lucia, the time is nigh. Um, Stephen can come up here with you. Is he panicking already? He's panicking in the pond. Oh, Why are you washing clothes in, in, a, in a rainstorm, Agnes? Stephen has the fear of water since when? Whatever. Come and get birth. And I need to get my dice out while she does this. So she is giving birth. So. All right. So she's giving birth, meaning we're going to do our regular birth roll. Oh, she had a oh boy. OK, our first heir of Gen 7? Question mark. I can't recall. But let's see, um, let's roll for Lucia first, I guess. So we want to avoid the number one. She got a 13, so Lucia survives. And this baby, we want to avoid numbers 5, 10, 15, and 20. The baby got a 12. Okay, so it survives. Um, I actually didn't have my wheel out. Oh, it was already on my own names. Excellent. So let's see what this baby's name is. Our heir of Gen 7, I think this is Gen 7, is named Lawrence. Oh, I think this is our first Lawrence we've had in the family. Lawrence Smith. Is that the only one? Okay, just one. I thought that baby was red. <laughs> I got kind of scared. Okay, so because Stephen accepted this pregnancy, he feels a lot better towards his son Lawrence than he does, than um, Lucia does. And then he does, and more than he does for uh, Edith, which we could also say is because this is a boy. Maybe he only likes boys because the more heirs he has, the less he has to like worry about keep impregnating uh, Lucia, and they can just kind of do their own thing. But the more girls he has, they have to just keep trying for boys, and that clearly makes them both uncomfortable. She wants to have another baby with him, though, so I'm going to let her rest, obviously, so she mm, can chill. And while the family is chilling and still kind of waking up for the day, don't overreact. Um, while the family is waking up for the day and Annabelle loses her mind scrubbing clothes in the middle of a rainstorm, I'm going to go age up some of the other side household members. So we're taking a small break from the main household love drama to age up some of Amisa's kids once again. So this one, we have two birthdays. We have Nicola, who is Amisa's eldest child. She's super cute. And aging up Serena, who was her second youngest. I'm, I'm a little scared, I'm not going to lie, because we know how the aging up process went last time, which was devastating to me personally. But I'm hoping for the best with this one. So let's just get into it. I'm also surprised Emma's still still kicking. Are, are you planning on doing that much longer? Apparently so. Well, keep on living. So let's just let's just start here. Uh, let's go ahead and roll for little. All right, Nicole is aging up into a teenager, meaning we want to avoid the number seven. Let's just roll. She got a 17. Okay, so, oh my gosh, Amis has a surviving child. This is her first fully survived child. This doesn't mean that we're done with the household. We won't be done with the household until Jalissa has her teenage role. But before we get to Jalissa, let's go ahead and roll for Serena before I officially age them up. Serena is, is aging up into a child, so we want to avoid numbers 9 and 19. And she got a 10. Oh my God, I thought that was about to be a 9. Okay. So she's doing better than the last one. All I had to do was not talk about how excited I was or think about it and everything worked out. So let's start with Nicola because she's older. Nicola teen. Let's see how. Oh my gosh, the umbrella noise scared me. I thought it snapped in half for some reason. 
I've had an umbrella just completely snap. So she's an animal enthusiast, unconventional, analytical, and bashful. Okay, aw, that's cute. So I'm not sure. She's unconventional, just like her cousin. No, her her aunt. No, what what are you to <laughs> what are you to Alberta cousins? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, she's unconventional, just like her cousin Alberta. So I think that she wants to find her soulmate. Oh. Beautiful. <laughs> oh no. Oh well, that that that's not very beautiful. But you know, there's a place for everything. Now let's go to Jer Jerina, Selena. I'm losing my mind. I'm still not recovered from the fact that those two are soulmates. Let's age you up into a child. How how you feeling? So she is a language savant. She's shy and peaceful. Okay, so Amis has some really calm and sweet kids. That's really nice to see. Let's age them up and give them makeovers, which I'm really excited about. Here is Nicola, if she would stop moving for a second. Oh, her teeth. The teeth automatically go to this. Uh, You know what? I can't be bothered to fix it. Normally it goes to like this monster teeth or this one. The rest of them, sure, keep it. But this is her. She's super cute. She looks so much like a meese. I can't get over it. She's super pretty and I love her so much. So let's do her little sister. And of course, here is cute little Serena, who I, uh, she's so cute. I honestly don't know what to do. I really wish her sister survived. But, you know, between her and the little one, whose name I can't remember right now, I'm really excited for these genetics. Obviously, all of the kids look cute, especially since we just saw, um, not Serena, geez, Nicola aged up. But I honestly am most excited to see the more unique magical and human looking ones because our you know our family's kind of lost i was gonna say lost its humanity but yeah no one's been a human in a couple generations mostly because of mary's influence but you know i really like the way that these kids look and especially especially serena i'm excited to see her grow up even more and as well as the little one so fingers crossed for those two and the others but you know i'm a little bit biased came back to the main household to see the three ladies sitting and eating their breakfast together they made some spinach salad and look at annabelle acting like she actually gives a darn about annabelle yeah, about <laughs> Alberta. all it took all it took was her to be in love for her to care about her kid grogo is shaking his head jeez Mary's ghost is still fresh in the dirt out back, and now you want to switch it up. I think also she's trying to focus on uh, Alberta so she doesn't say or do anything around Lucia, but she's literally glowing pink, so I don't think that you're hiding yourself as well as you think you are. Lucia, that's not... that's... that's... Lucia, that's not... that's not your... you don't even have romantic... Lucia. Lucia? That's... that's not your... that's not not your bed all right let's have a look at these hatchable eggs oh no lucy is getting abducted which makes her the first non-alien to get abducted why would you wake up but you're asleep to get abducted for the other sims that are like already outside i understand but recently my sims have just been waking up to go get kidnapped okay bye see you in a few hours all right, it's the next day. It's actually egg day. And to celebrate, well, everyone's just up getting ready for the day. Well, mostly everyone's up getting ready for the day. These guys are eating their eggs. And before we do anything, slash the end of this episode, because I've actually been recording for quite a while, we're actually going to end off by aging up Lawrence into an infant. So for infancy, we want to avoid numbers 12, 16, and 18. So let's just roll. And he got a 15, 12, 16, 18. Okay, yeah, he survives. Excellent. So let's have uh, let's have Grandma Annabelle do it. So she's not eating right now. She's just running her mouth. And let's age up the baby. Give him a quick makeover and we will see what he looks like.
little flower. Uh oh. Is the baby gone? No, he's right here. <laughs> Lawrence is a calm infant. Nice. Does he have his mom's texture? No, he doesn't. All right. So let's give him a quick, quick. Listen, cow's been raining for five days straight. Give me a break. Let me give this kid a makeover real quick. Now that Mary was gone, Denise visited home for the first time in years to spend egg day with the family. She was sad that she didn't get a chance to see Agnes, but made the most of her time with Elbretta and Stephen. Meanwhile, Lucia used the visit as an excuse to focus on her baking and put some distance between her and Annabelle, who was usually not far from her. The two of them avoided speaking directly. Instead, Annabelle began using conversations with Elbretta as a way to bridge interactions between her and Lucia. Contrary to the dramatics of the main household, Agnes' life was peaceful. She became quick friends with Iris and focused on her rapidly growing magical abilities. The other spellcasters in the commune praised her for her talent. She was gifted in magic and had the potential to be a great mage or a very dangerous witch, 